Just a minute, did somebody say something? Yes, it was me. Oh, right. What did you say? I said, yes, it was me. Yeah, I know that, but... Well, if you knew that, why did you ask? No, I mean, what did you say when it was you? Again, please? When it was you. I said, did somebody say something, and you said it was me. Was it? No. No, it was you. You said it was me, but you meant, of course, it was you. Of course. Yeah, so what was it? What was what? What you said. Oh, you mean when I was me or when I was you? When you were you, of course. Why would you ever be me? Oh, I'd never want to if I could help it. So what did you say? <sighs> what do you want me to say? Just tell me, before you said it was me, you, you must have said something that was the thing that made me say, did somebody say something? Um, can we have a little break now? My head's ready. Oh, Betty, this is very simple. Is it? Yes, and you're good at simple. Oh. Now, think woman. Oh, God, what am I saying? <laughs> right, now, somebody said something. You said it was me. What was it? Oh, Betty, don't tilt your head over like that. Your brain will fall out your ear. Um, I said... I said... I said, hello, Arthur. Right, yes, that's it. Why? Because it would have been silly to say hello, Tom, wouldn't it? <laughs> Why? Because that's not his name. Not whose name? It's not anybody's name. His name is in Tom. Well, which one out of all the people in the world who aren't called Tom was it? It was Arthur, of course. Arthur? Where? Here. That's why I said, hello, Arthur, because he's here. Where? Where is he? In there. In the... Why? Why is he in there? Arthur, why are you in here? Because you look busy and I didn't want to disturb you. Oh, thanks very much. It's extremely kind of you. Where'd you get that banana? From the food box. That is my banana. Give it to me. <sighs> Boy, is he a grouch or what? Yeah, he's in a bit of a bad M double O double D with a capital double D. I think he got out of his desk on the wrong side. Why don't they put zippers on these things? Now, listen, Arthur, what's going on here? Nothing. I just walked in here and said, hello, everybody, I'm home. Yes, I thought so, but this isn't your home. Well, maybe not, but I do think of it as my home away from home. Now, Arthur, what makes you think you can just stroll in here and make this your home? Away from home. Oh, shut up. I always do. I come here every day. It's my banana break. Your what? I get tired, so I drop in here for a banana. It's like climbing a mountain. What's mountain climbing got to do with all this? Mountain climbers always have a little rest before they push on to the summit. Uh, that's right, Mr Kelly. I, I read that. I'll push you uh, off the summit. <laughs> now, Arthur, what makes you think you can just stroll in here any time you want to? Do you want me to come here when I don't want to? No, I'm just Don't you saying... want me to come here at all? Don't you like me anymore? No, it's just Do you that hate I... me or something? No, I don't hate you. I always thought we were friends. Well, of course we're friends. I must have done something really wrong to make him hate me like this. Oh, sometimes his mind works in mysterious ways, Arthur. I'm sorry, Mr Kelly, but whatever you think of me, I want you to know that I'll always be there for you. <laughs> oh, forget it. Just forget I spoke, Arthur. Just take over my home. Why don't you pick a room? Any room. Take my room if you like. Just help yourself to my home. If that's what you want. Oh, no, Mr. Kelly. Now you're confusing him. He's only a little kid. All right, all right. I'm sorry. Look, Arthur, let me explain it this way. This is my home. I know. And Sam's home. I know that too. And Jenny and Ben's home. And my home. It is not your home. <laughs> and it's not your home either. You understand? Yes, Mr. Kelly. Right. Now, we can still be friends, and you can still come by and visit, but you are not to treat this house as if it is your home. Is that clear? Yes, yes Mr. Kelly. Fine. Oh. Hello. This is the Kelly residence, as has just been made abundantly clear. <laughs> Yes, yes, he's here. Of course he's here. It's for him. I don't believe it. Sorry about that. We must have a crossed line or something. Can I help you? No, I promise I won't do that again. <laughs> uh, Sam, no, no, I'm sorry. She's not here at the moment. Yes, yes, I can take a message. Yep. Okay, yep, I'll write that down straight away. Okay, then. Fine. Bye.
Uh, I can't talk now, Jen. I've got to write something down before I forget. Oh, wow. What's just a sandwich or a Taj Mahal in bread? <laughs> Not anymore, it's not. Jenny, that's mine. Oh, come on, Ben, you couldn't possibly eat all this. Jenny, it's for football practice. What are you going to do, line the team up and get them to tackle it? <laughs> Jenny, I need that sandwich because I'm going to football practice and I need the energy. Oh, all right. But I don't see what you're getting there's such a fuss over. It's just a sandwich. Just a sandwich? Just a sandwich? I'll have you know that this is a work of art. You know, this sandwich contains 15 separate ingredients. Is that right? 16 if you count the bread. <laughs> and they're all carefully arranged in taste progression. Taste progression? Yeah. You see, a bite of this sandwich isn't just a bite, it's a... It's a journey. It's a journey through a series of flavours that mix and blend and somehow strangely contrast. For Pete's sake, come back to Earth. It's a sandwich, not an astral experience. <laughs> well, that's all you know. And in addition to everything else, this sandwich contains every major nutrient group. Oh. oh. Well, now it's got Scotch Guard as well. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I said to her, What do you think you're doing? He's my man. Touch him and I hope your eyes rot and fall out of your head. Just a second, Katie. Yes? Jenny, you're on the phone. Yes. Well, how long have you been on the phone? What are you, the telephone police? <laughs> no, I'm expecting an important call. I don't want the phone tied up. Just a second, Katie. I'm having a little trouble with the telecom terminator. Yes, her. <gasps> I'm sorry, but the number you have dialed is no longer connected. Please don't call back. Goodbye. Thanks. <laughs> you know. Jenny, I'm expecting an important call. I don't want the line tied up with a juvenile giggling. I was not giggling. You're about to, I can tell. <laughs> so anyway, who's this important phone call from? Money beeswax? I know. The palace is going to ring and offer you a job as the Duchess of York. Why would they do that? I believe the position is vacant. <laughs> if you really must know, I'm expecting Jason to call. Oh, he did. He did? He did. Yeah, sorry, I meant to tell you this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you? Uh, oh, I forget. Oh, you forgot? How could you possibly forget? Oh. Ah, that's why I didn't tell you. I remember now. I forgot. Oh, ben, this was a vital call and you simply forgot it. Well, Jenny stole my sandwich. Oh, that's right. Blame me. Oh, I knew this would be your fault somehow. What about the sandwich? It was more a journey, actually. <laughs> what is she talking about? Well, it was a great sandwich. You see, it contained every major nutrient group and it was all arranged in taste for... Ben! Yes? You're trembling on the brink. The brink, you say? The brink of the abyss. That's not good, is it? No, it's not. So forget about your little sandwich. Uh, which little sandwich is that? That's good. <laughs> now, when Jason called, what did he say? What did he say? That's what I want to know. He said, uh... Yes? He said, uh... Hello, is Sam there? And I said... No, not that part, the part after that! He said, um... The edge, man, the edge! He said something about, did, 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 did you want to go to the polo ball? Yes! Well, and if you did, then you had to ring by eight. Eight what? <laughs> I think he means eight o'clock. Oh, it was after nine! Oh, well, it'll be too late now. It's his fault, he's that. Hang on, what's all this polo ball nonsense? Nonsense? It is not nonsense. The polo ball is a social event of the year. Invitations to the polo ball are about as scarce as rocking horse droppings. <laughs> You missed this one, then. Ben, do you hear a voice saying, Ben, Ben, walk towards the light? Uh, no. Well, keep listening. You're about to any minute. <laughs> Is it OK, Mr Kelly, if I come in or do you still hate me? Oh, are you majoring in three-unit guilt for school? Yes, you can come in. I'm sorry, Mr Kelly. Even though you hate me, I want you to know that I still like you. Oh, Arthur, I don't hate you. I mean, I always thought of you as a friend that I could tell my troubles to. You can. Now, don't you feel like a meanie? Now, as my father used to say, go... Shut up. Yeah, that's right. How did you know? Now, Arthur, do you have any particular trouble you want to tell me about? Yeah, just the worst possible thing that could happen to any kid anywhere in the world, ever. Oh, that good, eh? So, what is this worst possible thing that can happen to so forth, so forth and so forth? I've got to go to the dentist. Oh, is that all? What do you mean, is that all? Do you know what they do to you there? They strip you down and they get these big plus, they pull your teeth. They do not. They do, they do. And if you don't let go of the tooth that they're pulling, they can pull your whole skeleton out through your mouth. <laughs> 
Papa, that's absolute nonsense. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Kelly. It sounds pretty logical to me. See, it sounds pretty logical to her. <laughs> okay, I admit that one might be a bit far-fetched. But they still torture you. You know, my Uncle Gazza had to go to the dentist once in Morbid. Oh, see what you've done now? <laughs> he, he had really strong teeth, so strong that the dentist tried to pull one out and he couldn't, and he dislocated his elbow. <laughs> he did not. Yes, he did. He, he, his teeth had roots in them as, as long as your leg. Well, almost. Anyway, my dad said to him, No more, Gazza. I know how to get that pesky little blighter out. Yes, Betty, I'm sure he said exactly that. Yeah. Now, Arthur. What did he do, Betty? Oh, no, don't ask her that. Well, he, he tied a piece of string to the tooth and then the other piece to the kitchen door. Why did he do that? Oh, well, and then he slammed the door shut, see, with the, with the string still tied to the door. And what happened then? And then, bang, it just popped out. What, the tooth came out? No, the kitchen door did. It <laughs> and bounced off the wall and hit poor old Uncle Gaz in the head. <laughs> see, this is the sort of trouble you get into when you go to the dentist. Oh, Arthur, it is not. There's nothing to worry about going to the dentist. Uh-huh. And when did you have your last checkup? In March. Which year? <sighs> that doesn't matter. Now, Arthur. Uh, which, which year? Oh, all right. 1986. All right, are you satisfied? I go to the dentist regularly, every seven years. I can, <laughs> I can do that because I've got particularly strong teeth. Well, that's what I'm going to do too. No, Arthur, you have growing teeth. What? Like a beaver? Yeah, something like that. And you have to look after them. Now, what time is this appointment? In half an hour. Right. I'm coming along with you too, just to make sure you turn up. Now, we'll go to the bathroom and get you a new toothbrush so you can brush your teeth. Why clean them? He's going to pull them out anyway. Arthur, what did you have for lunch? A salami roll with extra pickled onions. <laughs> That's why we brush. It's not a good idea to have dentists passing out in our lap. Oh, Mr Kelly, I rang the dentist to say that Arthur would be a bit late for his appointment. Oh, good work, Betty. Yeah. And he said, That's fine, he's not busy, so guess what I did? What? What did you do? <laughs> I made an appointment for you too, isn't that good? <laughs> oh, just peachy, Betty, peachy. No, no, don't grind your teeth, Mr Kelly. Let the dentist do that. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> You shall no longer cause me grief. You're going to blow your brains out. Make sure you aim carefully. Ah, juvenile wit. So deliciously pretentious, isn't it? No, I have here the answer to my phone message problem. See? It's an answering machine. Well, where'd you get that? Emma lent it to me. It's an old one from her mum's shop. So now when I go out, all I have to do is switch this on and I won't have to rely on either of you to pass on any messages for me. Well, Sam, there's no need for that. I mean, I don't mind taking messages for you. Yes, well, that may be so. But what's the use when you forget to pass them on and I miss out on the invitation to the pie ball? It's a point, I suppose. Yes. So now when Jason calls to invite me to the polo ball with another one of his friends from the country, this is what he will hear. Hello, this is Samantha Prudence Kelly. Prudence? Holy mackerel! <laughs> you have a message for me. Please leave it when you hear the tone. If, on the other hand, you have a message for Benjamin Hubner or Jennifer Kelly, that's tough bananas because this is my answering machine and I won't pass on any messages to them because they've never done it for me. <laughs> well, you've got to hand it to the girl. She really knows how to hate. <laughs> hey, guys, guess what? He didn't have to drill. He just spends your afternoon on an oil rig or something. <laughs> oh, I did the dentist and it was a piece of cake. The dentist. You enjoyed it. Yeah, not a problem. And he let me drink all the green water I wanted. <laughs> Arthur, you're not supposed to drink the green water. It's antiseptic to rinse your mouth out. Is that what it is? I thought it was a pretty weird sort of lime flavour. <laughs> and anyway, no holes, no pain, no problem. He didn't have to drill. Mind you, there was a bit of bad luck about Mr. Kelly. What about you, Dad? Me? I'm going to kill Betty, that's what about me. I take it you've got some cavities, Mr. Kelly. Three. It's because you didn't have the correct fluoride treatment when you were a kid, I expect. How do you mean, Ben? You see, your teeth are like chalk. <laughs> and the fluoride gets in. Like this. He's right. It does get in. Keep it up, you two, because right after I've killed Betty, you're next. <laughs> Messages for me. Don't ask me, ask your machine. Ah, that I will do. Oh, the indicator says there are seven phone calls. Let's see. <laughs> then they left a message. That's what it sounds like. I don't believe it. I... Hello, 
Oh, well, I was just ringing to speak to Ben, but if you'd rather I didn't, then it's not important. So tell him, uh... Oh, never mind. <laughs> I have got a good mind to hurl this thing in the garbage. Sam, is something the matter? Yes! It's my answering machine. There was one message on there, it was for Ben. I'm waiting for someone to invite me to the polo ball, and they ring for Ben. A guy wants to take Ben to the polo ball? <laughs> it's understandable when you look at the alternative, Dad. Well, keep it down, would you? I'm trying to work. Yeah, of course. Oh, Mr. Mr. Kelly, Mr. Blunt, on the phone. Mr. Blunt, the town clerk? Yes. Um, uh, just one moment while I translate you to Mr. Kelly's phone. Um, take a deep breath, please. Uh, Mr. Blunt, um, hello, how are you? Yes, I wanted to talk to you about the new height restrictions that Council's bringing in for commercial buildings. Oh, you, you'll drop by tomorrow? Okay, um, 11 o'clock? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. You've got your dental appointment then. Oh, yes, I have. I'm sorry, Mr. Blunt, my secretary has just pointed out that I have a dental appointment then. <laughs> um, let's make it in the afternoon, shall we? Um, how about 2.30? Get it? Chinese dentist time? 2... 1.30? Fine. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Mr. Bunt. Bye. Mm, nice try, Mr. Kelly. Oh, Betty, you don't think I was trying to dodge my dental appointment, do you? Oh, no. I wasn't. I just forgot. Mm -hmm. Although, it, it is a good idea if I cancel Dentist, it because it's a really... tomorrow, 11 o'clock, be there. <laughs> Mr. Bunt, do come in. Thank you. Welcome to our lovely home and office, but it is the home part which you are now standing in presently. Is it? Yes. I'm afraid Mr. Kelly has been unavoidably retained and in inevitably delayed um, due to an unforeseen circumstance which has resulted in a modicum of tardiness. <laughs> He's not here. <laughs> but it's 1.30. It is the time for our appointment. Oh. Well, uh, obviously the dentist had more to do than we thought. This is not good enough. I'm an important personage down at the council. I'm not a man to be kept waiting, frittering away his valuable working hours. Would you like to watch some TV while you're waiting? No, I would not. The last time I was here, you made me watch play school. Oh. <laughs> No, no, that'd be over by now. If you wanted to watch that, you should have come over this morning. I don't want to watch it. It was childish. Oh, well, yeah, children's programs do get that way. It was all about some big Ted person who wasn't feeling well. No. Never mind. Um, maybe you'd like to wait in Mr. Kelly's office. Yes, that would be more suitable. <laughs> he did get better, didn't he? Who? Big Ted. Oh, yeah. Ted lives forever. He's like the Phantom. Ah, there you are, Kelly. And you're exactly seven minutes and forty... No, as I speak, seven minutes and fifty seconds late. Oh, very sorry, Miss Holland. <laughs> what did he say? He said... <laughs> I heard that. What does it mean? I think it means, I'm very sorry, Mr. Blunt. Why is he talking this way? Oh, well, maybe his mouth's still, still numb from the dentist. Mr. Kelly, did they give you an injection? Uh, hey. Pardon? Hey. Uh, c can you do what sounds like? It sounds like hey, hey. Oh, the re-injection. Yeah, hey, yeah. Oh. I don't understand a word he's saying. Oh, never mind. I understand him. I will translate. <laughs> you will? Yeah, I speak fluent numb. <laughs> It goes with the head. It goes with my head. Mr. Kelly, that's not fair. You can't make me insult myself. Anyway, shall we proceed? Ready, Mr. Blunt? Oh, very well. Now, Kelly, these plans contravene the latest council regulations. Just a moment. The, uh, Ellie, 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 have to translate what you say. Oh, that's right, Mr. Kelly, very good. Um, the plans only exceed the height by eight centimetres. Uh, nothing. And that's nothing. Oh, no, no, no. Eight centimetres is eight centimetres, and there's a principle involved. Oh, but Mr. Blunt, these plans were drawn up and submitted before the new regulations come into force. Nevertheless, these will have to be amended. You all had it, heard you? What was that? That sounded like he called me a bald-headed badger. Oh, no, 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 he didn't say that. What did he say? He said, you bald-hearted manager. 
Why would he call me that? Because you are a old hairy guy, Jack. Because you are a bold-hearted manager. Of what? Of badges. Of men. <laughs> uh, manager of men. I didn't say badge, you said it first. I'm not convinced, and this is ridiculous. We'll continue this when Kelly is more coherent. Goodbye. Who are you, old hairy guy, Jack? Goodbye, you bold-hearted bandager. Goodbye. <laughs> Good riddance, too. <gasps> Mr. Kelly, you're speaking normally. Yeah, the numbness wore off minutes ago. Oh, but why didn't you say something? How, why did you keep talking like that? Oh, it was too good an opportunity to miss. I've been dying to call him a bald-headed badger to his face for ten years. <laughs> Recorded in front of a studio audience. This has been a Gary Riley production.